Cause I'm Mac. And I'm Blair. And on this channel, we like to look at cool and interesting articles and trends from across the world. We look at these great articles and we try to find them. We want to bring them to you. We want to open up a discussion. This week, we're starting out with something that's kind of tied close to where we are. Blair is pregnant with twins. So let's talk about some things related to medical, healthcare, pregnancy, and things like that. So let's jump straight into the first article. So for the first article, let's have a look at should brain dead women be kept alive and used as surrogates? Hmm. I'm currently pregnant with twins. I don't think so. Yeah, it's kind of giving me weird, eerie vibes. It's from a Norwegian philosopher. Uh, and she says that brain dead women should be kept alive as surrogates for people who may want to have babies, say if they can't have babies or if they're maybe a, a, a gay couple and they can't have children on their own. But the idea of keeping someone alive for that purpose is... Yes, and for months at a time, since pregnancy is at minimum 40 weeks, I think that's a bit long. Um, I have no issue with organ donation, so if you want to take the uterus or the fallopian tubes, I get that. But keeping the whole person... That's a lot. Yeah, and there's already surrogates. Like you can already yes. pay for people to be surrogates for you. So there's no reason right. to. So the in this article, they do talk about you have to give consent before. But still, I just. How, how would you give consent? I guess you'd sign up and like, you know, just like you're an organ donor. You know, if you're an organ okay. donor, you can sign up to be okay. an organ donor. It's on your driver's license in the U.S. to be an organ donor. In this case, you would also have. Maybe they could get it classified under organ donor. Then if you're brain dead, they could keep you alive for that purpose. Okay. But how many times? Right. right? What right. about that? Right. Right. So they keep you alive and you were a good surrogate and you gave birth to one baby. And there's, there's invasive surgeries because they have to implant the eggs in you. And then now you're keeping women alive as kind right. of breeding stock. Yes. So, you, so do, you, do you keep her alive as long as her body can continue to produce healthy babies? Yeah, I don't know about all of that. So there's a lot to deal with, organ, uh, with surrogacy. So some surrogates, they donate the eggs as well. Some surrogates are just vessels. So you have to be concerned about that. That's a lot of donation going yeah, on. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't. It's, just, it's like a slippery slope yes. for me. It's also... Would you, well, think about it like this. We're talking about specifically surrogates, but also keeping brain dead people alive to harvest organs. Well, think about it like if you, so uh, the person is, is brain dead, right? Uh, and you know, if you're brain dead, you're not going to wake up. There's no brain function. There's no chance that you'll ever come back to yourself. Your, your brain is, is dead. So there's no electrical patterns of you that are still there that'll come back. So you're not worried about that. But what if you start doing like organ harvesting from someone who's brain dead and just do like one organ at a time? Like, oh, well, we, we only need a kidney right now. Right. And so they pull the kidney from the person and they keep them, you know. Right. Going uh, with going with dialysis. Or something. And then, yeah, you can put them on dialysis. Oh, we could pull the liver and then we could take a liver. And then you just a, a human being becomes kind of a a la carte for organ donation. Right. You know, instead of all I'm talking about, instead of all at one time, because that's if you're going to keep the surrogate alive to 40 weeks with the baby and then delivery with the baby. And when you why wouldn't you do other things as well? Yeah, I'm. I guess I'm more worried about deterioration of the body. Yeah, I just. So. I'm more. I'm more concerned about about the rights of the individual. It just seems, like I said, but you know, I didn't think about this until just now. But you say that you you deliver one baby really well. Right. Do they want to do it again? And has, has there been research done? Like, how often can this be done? How frequently can it be done? Yeah. It's just. It's a lot. It's, it's, that it's I'm, an ethical. It's a no for me. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of butting up against the ethical line of keeping people alive just for the, for harvesting. But organ donation is really important. Like I accept right. that. I understand. Like organ donation is important. Important that people do need to donate organs mm -hmm. uh, if those situations come around. Like there are a lot of people who sit on those organ donor lists, and every year a lot of people die because they can't get organs donated. But I don't know if this is the right way. I don't know if this is necessarily one that needs to be added to the list yeah. of possible donations. Hey, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop that in the comments below. Tell us what do you think. Is it okay to keep women alive as surrogates uh, to give birth to babies that are not their babies? We're not talking about someone who's pregnant. Or even what about that? So let's say there's a wife. She has an accident. She's brain dead. And then the husband's like, but I still want a child. And 
could they do something there where they impregnate? How about that? I mean... Again, I, I think this is too much. It's, it's just a step too far for me. I would tell you to get married again, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you're still alive, so... But I, yeah, so that's it. Drop down in the comments. Let us know what you think. Let's move on to the to the next article because that one was really, that one makes you think. That's the reason we, we pulled this one up because I'm like, hey, this looks really interesting. Something to really think about. But let's move on to the next one. And you know what? I'll start this one off. So Pampers, who makes nappies or diapers, as they're calling the U.S., but nappies here in the U.K., they've developed a new smart sensor which alerts parents when the baby's nappy needs changing. Now, the funny thing about it, though, specifically, it's like a, a little module that you're able to attach to a certain type of diaper, and it's Wi-Fi connected. It can tell you whenever the baby has urinated, but you don't get defecation. So that's a lot. I'm like, usually for everybody that's held a baby or, or been around a lot of kids, I have four kids myself. So when they wet their diaper, you usually feel it. You get a warm sensation in your hand or your lap or wherever the baby's sitting. Uh, I think I have enough indications already. <laughs> what about, no, no, I know grandmothers. We're not going to say which grandmother. <laughs> likes to, there's the, there's the, the it, it talks about two main methods, right? People, normally you do a little peek or... You stick the finger in, because I know a grandmother oh. who likes to stick the finger in, do a That's little horrible. wet yes. check, and we like, that is disgusting. Please don't do that ever again. And it keeps happening. Don't do that. Yes. But, you know, don't we already have this through the diapers that do the color change? Yes, but those are on the um, early age diapers, so only like one through maybe three has that on it. Okay. But, yeah, you usually learn when your kid is going to wet the diaper so you can... What, you can change it right after you learn their patterns. So. But this 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 gives you a way. If it's Wi-Fi connected, I can see there's a video monitor. And I can see a graph, and you can maybe chart it over days and times. Precisely. And you can, and precise. Yes. Maybe for those parents who really want that extra love. You know, these are the parents that maybe they have the baby sleeping, and there's the the, the monitor, and then there's the motion sensor. Yes. And now there's a Wi-Fi connected nappy on yes. the baby as well you have a wi-fi connected nappy that's wow, that's a know, lot of information that's a lot that's a lot of information we can literally just pick the baby up or, or just yes. uh, our what we used to do is um we just change a diaper at a certain yes period especially when they're really young when they're really young right before you feed them you change your diaper yeah you just you know your pattern and you do that but there this this diaper is going to be coming out like later on this year and I'm going to tell you, we may try. I just want to see what this <laughs> Wi-Fi connected diaper will look like. What that'll look. We may try it. It's not out yet. And uh, if we do try it, we'll come back and let you guys. We'll give you an update on the Wi-Fi connected diapers or nappies. I really don't know. I mean, some things seem necessary and then some things seem a bit just a step, step too far. <laughs> a step and a bridge too far. But this is what Pampers is doing. It's with a Wi-Fi, an active sensor to be able to tell you when your baby's diaper or nappy is wet. But they can't do defecation. And I'm more concerned about when they poop. Yes, that's true. I mean, I get it. When they, when, when they, when they urinate, when they pee, you know, that's what leads you to diaper rash. Well, poo more. Yeah, well, both can kind of lead to diaper yeah. rash. So you definitely need to be changing the nappy. Yeah. And, and just, so a lot of parents could say, if you're in touch with your baby, like if you're in tune with your baby, if you're yes. handling your baby, working with your baby, yes. you should get a sense of this pretty quickly. That's true. When they poo, they do kind of make a grunt, yeah. smile at you. A lot of things happen. Yeah, so. yeah, they like to smile because you're going to have to clean it up there not. <laughs> So I just think that that is a little much for me. Well, drop that in the comments. Let us know what you think about the the Wi-Fi connected nappies. Nappies with an active sensor. Yes. That's interesting. All right. So we're going to move on to the next topic here. This one should be... If you like this content and would like more, please like and subscribe. Pretty interesting. It kind of gets us closer back to the first one. And this is a in, in Massachusetts in the U.S., incarcerated individuals will be able to donate it's a bill this is not a law this is just a bill this is a proposal in Massachusetts that incarcerated individuals will be able to donate bone marrow and organ donations to get time off on their prison sentences 
So okay. think about it like this. Oh, if you give up uh, <laughs> half a liver, maybe that's a half a year off. Or if you give up a kidney, maybe it's 365 days off of your prison sentence. What are your, what are your thoughts about that? See, we're back to bartering with organs and stuff. I don't know about this. <laughs> but this um, is an actual bill. I'm, look, I'm looking at it. It's Massachusetts Bill HD.3822. This is an actual bill. It says it's, it's current right now. An act to establish the Massachusetts Incar Incarcerated Individual Bone Marrow and Organ Donation Program. And it gets back to that idea that there are a lot of people sitting on the organ donor list and they need they need organs and i guess the i guess the other side of it is well incarcerated individuals they're not using those livers for drinking they're not drinking i don't know i am I, I so <laughs> concerned by all of this so now you're saying the lives of the incarcerator are not that important i'm not saying it i didn't make this bill <laughs> that, look you can have part a lobe of my of my liver a part of my lung take an eye if you need it yeah. for a corneal transplant yeah you can you know you give up a few organs you can knock off maybe five years off your prison sentence oh no oh no five years That's I mean, it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how the you know how they're. It's gonna be an a la carte system. They'll let you know when you when you go into prison, uh, if you're willing to donate these parts. They're gonna you know this. A liver may be a year. A kidney may be two years. Half a year. You know you can live with one kidney. So may not get as much time for. Okay, uh, skin cells is one thing. Like you do uh, skin grafts. Okay, I get that. Okay, skin grafts for like burn victims yeah, or something like that. I that get would, that. Yeah, yeah. You know. You could technically survive with one lung. Stop it, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I want to give up a lung, a kidney, and maybe a portion of liver. And I have a 10-year sentence. That could knock me down maybe to a three-year prison sentence. Okay, the initial bone marrow was a lot... <laughs> Yeah, that's regenerative. You just said a liver. I'm just thinking, like, a part of the liver. Not the whole thing, just a portion. I mean, I don't want to be in jail for 10 years. This could this could really open up some opportunities for me as an individual. But how does that affect your overall health if you started I, donating you know, all these I'm, organs? Well, I'm pretty sure they'll... Uh, <laughs> See? <laughs> okay, what about this one? Here's one that won't hurt him. What about, like, uh, semen donations? That's not an organ, but okay. I guess you could do semen donation. But it's like, I guess that's regenerative, so it doesn't really take it. You could do those. Yeah, but I'm sure the sperm banks are doing fine. So. Well, I think, well, from what I've, the last I've read, the, the sperm banks are, there's a lot of eggs in storage, but there's way more sperm uh, available. Yeah. But the sperm banks, but maybe they could donate for experimental purposes, the sperm for okay, experimental, for research. Okay. And for research. You can get a day. What about that? Every time you donate sperm, you get a day knocked off your prison sentence. <laughs> That could, one one day. I've never been incarcerated, so this might be good for somebody. I just I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, drop that in the comments again, guys. Let us know. This is a real bill right now. Bone marrow and organ donation. Now you can give up bone marrow, and I think you can recover that. So, but I think mm -hmm. bone marrow and sperm. I've never donated bone marrow. I hear it's very painful though, because they have to get yeah, punch a hole the, the down bone. into the the bone marrow but mm -hmm. it does regenerate mm -hmm. so the bone marrow regenerates the sperm regenerates you could donate those two things yeah skin, like I said, skin so, as well and what else could you skin and maybe if some individuals who incarcerated grow some really luxurious hair, hair follicles you could you could donate oh the, i was follicles. thinking about the hair but the hair follicles would be even better yeah. you could donate those but then look at what we're doing now now we're incarcerating people and we're turning the incarcerated into uh, human organ shopping. Yes. You know. Yes. And it's just kind of. Mm -mm. I don't know, but but these are but there's a need, there's a need there for a organ need. donation, and there's a lot of guys who could use those hair follicles, and and there are people who could researchers who maybe could use that sperm. True. And uh, bone marrow and organ donation program. Let us know what you think about that. This is. This is different. It Very kinda, different. Yeah, it's kind of pushes us along that 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 ethical yes. line of what's acceptable and and what's not acceptable. 
I don't know. So hey, listen guys, this is our first take on this. This is our first look at some of the news. If you know of some really cool articles or you've seen some things in the news, drop them in the comments or send us an email. We'll love to give you a review of it. It'll take a look at it, pull it up for others to see. I would love for this to be an interactive space where I go out, I'm finding things, Blair's finding things, we'll bring it to you. But if you see some great things out there, bring that to us as well. We could kind of go and talk through it and bring it to the broader community. But listen, I think that's it for this one. Yep. Okay guys, until next time, take care. Take care.